Dr. Jim Lim from NCS, healthcare sector. Jim is currently the sector leader for the healthcare uh, section of NCS. And uh, his role is to expand uh, NCS into the private healthcare and regional healthcare providers. Uh, he has 20 years of experience in management in IT industry, in, uh, wow, good names, MDocs, Tech Mahindra, Accenture, and Chemin Chartered Semiconductor. Prior to joining NCS, Jim was the CEO of Good Doctor Technology, successfully setting up the company in Singapore and Indonesia, ramped up the team to 100 people, and launched Grab Health in a short span of eight months. Grab Health, hmm, interesting. Is that part of Grab? Yeah, that's part of Grab. It is part of Grab. Oh, okay. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, over the past 30 years, NCS has grown and transforming Singapore from developing country to first world. We all know that. And frankly, I don't need to tell you about NCS, right? So we all know about NCS, all those of us who have been in Singapore for a long time. So without further ado, let me introduce you, Mr. Jim Lim. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I hope you can see my screen. Is it coming up? Yes, when nope. pandemic and technology meet. Ah, that's good. Okay. So there may be right. some delay uh, I'm at home. Yeah. yeah, so yeah thanks, yeah. thanks, Mike, for the introduction. Yeah, uh, I will make it quite short. In fact, uh, you probably didn't mention I was also ex Huawei, <laughs> but I was based uh, not in Singapore. So I've just came back to Singapore, I think, uh, last, uh, last year. Yeah, last year to launch Grab Health in Indonesia. Yeah. So you don't see it in uh, Singapore because uh, you, it's uh, location-based, right? So you only can see it when you are in Indonesia itself that uh, you can use Grab Health, which is very similar to most of the telehealth uh, uh, systems in uh, Singapore as well, yeah? The only difference is, uh, is a joint venture between Grab and Ping An Good Doctor, and of course, SoftBank uh, was one of the investors. Okay, so let me just start, yeah? So I, I think uh, thanks to all the presenters uh, before this, uh, we have seen many different technologies from AI robotics, to telehealth, to thermal scan, and many others, right? To help in uh, potentially uh, improve uh, healthcare as well as uh, fighting the pandemic situation now, which is for COVID-19. So for mine, right, I decided to do something differently, right? Instead of showing what NCS has to uh, deliver or offer, I will show at the end for some of it, right? But I will not go into details. I just want to share as a real healthcare protect, uh, practitioner, Right, and one of those who is involved in the Singapore Expo CCF, what do we really use technology for, right? So instead of all the nice stories, uh, let me just tell you what exactly uh, is to be used, is used there, and what can be used there, yeah? Okay, I don't know if my slide moved, right? So it all started on a Good Friday morning, right? So Good Friday was a long weekend, uh, if you uh, don't remember, right? It was also the... Uh, starting period of the circuit breaker, right? So on a good Friday morning uh, 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 weekend, long weekend, uh, I got a call from NCS CEO that uh, we wanted to kind of form a courage squad, right, to help in uh, supporting the CCF. It was called CIF, Community Isolation Facilities, uh, in the past, and now has changed to CCF, right? So we wanted to help uh, IHES, which is our customers, to kind of uh, support what is needed at the Expo CIF or CCF, right? So what is there, right? This is the Expo. For those who understand Mandarin, right? It is actually very similar to the China uh, Fang Chang Yi Yuan, right? Which is basically you use uh, a lot of cubicles, you make up a temporary hospital or isolation facilities. So this is a CIF in uh, Expo, right? And we formed this courage squad. So at that time uh, on the first day, right? Within six hours of a long weekend, we gather all the uh, different departments of people, including HR, uh, finance, and so on and so forth, because it's a pro bono work. And at the same time, people are worried to go home. So we need to find accommodation because you don't know what you're going to get at the CIF, right? So we actually gather the people there without knowing much. We jump into it to form the courage squad of about five people as a start, right? Within six hours, then we go in. Because what we were told is that we probably need to do some IT support, right? So I gather the team. And then for the IT support, what do you do? Uh, probably if the laptop has some issue, if the devices have some issue, right? Even changing battery, you need to help them. Right, so those are not the high tech thing that you probably can envision or, or can imagine, right? But that's what you need to do, right, in a situation like that. So without knowing much, we get, we went in, right? So 
after we arrive at Expo, right, what is really needed is actually this thing, right? You see that there are five pieces of equipments there, right? One is an iPad, one is a thermometer, you, if you can see it, right? It's a mercury-based thermometer, not even a digital one. You have an oximeter, which is to measure your blood oxygen, right, SpO2, and then you have the blood pressure monitor, right? So these are the equipments to be given to the patients, right? Who are the patients? The patients, of course, are mainly foreign workers now, but at the, at the beginning, it was not just foreign workers. It also includes people with a light symptom, right? So why do you want to give this to them? It's basically for them to do their self-monitoring, right? Each day, three times, morning, afternoon, and night, right? To measure all their vital signs, right? So it's uh, what we call the VSM, vital signs monitoring. And what is being deployed is actually telehealth, right? So now you're probably using the things like Doctor Anywhere or White Coat or so on and so forth. Those are mainly your normal GP consultations. But this is really a telehealth for vital signs monitoring, right? Similar to some extent, but it actually records more data over here, right? Because uh, again, over the B2C platform that you have today, you may not be able to register or capture all the data due to a lot of uh, data security and privacy issues, right? But this is from uh, mainly IHIS working with uh, uh, other vendors to do a telehealth being deployed, okay? So if you ask me, Telehealth is the future to go. I think everyone knows about that. But how far it can go, it depends on the capabilities of the telehealth uh, applications, right? What we have seen here is actually there's a need, right? Uh, probably in Singapore for an integrated remote diagnostic. Why do I say that? If you look at all these devices, they are still quite uh, traditional, right? Mercury-based uh, thermometer, and uh, you have a uh, uh, blood pressure monitor, which is not connected to the devices. So every time the foreign workers or the patients have got to do, they take their vital signs and they need to enter into the iPad itself, right? So if you ask me if there is something that is already integrated fully with a telehealth application, that'll be great. And coming from a good doctor background, right, Grab Health. So same thing uh, in Singapore, we don't have something that is FDA or CE certified both uh, to be really readily to be launched in Singapore to be integrated with the telehealth. There's a lot of research and a lot of startup ongoing doing that, but you need to deploy it in Singapore. You need at least FDA and a CE certification, right? So these are the challenges. Of course, I was working in China for the past 10 years. There's a lot of uh, such integrated remote diagnostic devices in China, but most of them are CFDA certified, not yet FDA certified, okay? So this is, if you ask me, potential market that uh, anyone interested can go in. Of course, NCS is also exploring this part of things for the digital health ecosystem. Yeah. So while we think that uh, everyone is going to move into high tech and everything needs a technology to help, uh, I can share with you a story that's quite different over there. Right on the second or third day, we realize uh, the the nurses or the people working in the isolation isolation facilities. Uh, they are wearing full medical PPE. PPE stands for Personal Protection Equipment. So with a full medical PPE, which includes wearing your glove, right? how are the people going to swipe your iPad? Right? No way, because things don't move. Right? So what happened on the day is on the second of... Sorry, there's some echo. Okay, so on the second or third day, I can remember, we will say, can we go and find stylus for the iPad itself? So we have to open up the warehouse, our marketing folks, Right, open up the warehouse and really go and dig where are the stylus because nowadays people just use fingers to swipe. When do you want to really use stylus, right? Not just iPad, but even tablet or other Android phones. So this is where, look at it that way. Technology, if you cannot serve the need, it is just high tech, right? So all technology that is invented, you need to not flash the high tech side of things, but how it can really help to solve the problem. Right, so this is where may stylus pen may not be that high tech in today's world, but it is very useful. Okay. So when when technology and pandemic meet, right? So again, there are many many stories to share over there, right? I just picked some of them. Things like RFID tech, right? Uh, normal RFID tech, right? You can easily tear away, right? And some RFID tech will have uh, interference with the iPad itself. So you need specific ones, right? Where do you go and find them? Right, and we are asking how can we ensure the patient uh, they will diligently perform the self monitoring, right? Because three times a day, ma, then uh, you want to deploy as few people in the isolation facilities as possible so that people don't get infected easily, right? And then how do you ensure tracking, right? What if people take the iPad and uh, iPad and then go out and live with it, right? So things like this is not about the money, right? It's about if you take an infected uh, device out of the isolation facilities, it's going to be dangerous. 
So how do you ensure asset tracking, right? So we think of many, many different ways together, right? Even thinking of flying drones uh, to check like what China did, right? You fly drones and then you can check hey, whether the people are moving about wearing masks or not. So we thought of the same thing. Or you use video analytics, right? That's another way, right? You mount the uh, video cameras and then you do analytics and then you have AI, facial recognition, all these things to check. Yeah, all this are what as a tech person will do. Uh, huh? But in reality, it doesn't work there. Why? Because you have line of sight problem right ceilings problem uh, in the expo itself you cannot really fly drones i mean you have pipes running everywhere so again this is an example just like the starlos pen right high tech are good but if you cannot solve a problem they remains as technology okay so then the, there are many many different uh, uh, cases that we have seen and uh, we have deployed so for example there is a uh, uh, different patient needs right for example telehealth as i mentioned right with telehealth you need to uh, do a provisioning of the iPad, right? And uh, for the SIM card activation. So we have a remote MDM uh, provisioning being done, right? People need to, the foreign workers want to do remittance. They cannot go out. No more Western Union cannot go out, right? Some of them, their phone don't have all the apps also. So what can you do? Of course, Intel Dash can come in, right? To help them in the remittance side of things, right? And this is actually a Huawei telepresence. Uh, I think just now, uh, Chi Sing introduced. So it's a whiteboard that's being uh, uh, donated or rather uh, not, not donated, I mean, just placed there for the operation team to use, right? So things like this were very, very useful from a tech perspective that can really solve a problem, right? They may not be the most high tech thing, but they are good enough to solve the immediate problems. The next thing is the Huawei phone here, right? So again, you don't want to uh, deploy too many. We need 1,000 over uh, phones, right? Uh, to install with telehealth and then put it for them to use. You don't want to deploy too many of the new phones that may cause problem, right? So again, we uh, got Huawei's help to get some of the youth phone to really uh, install the telehealth and then uh, they can use the use it for the self-monitoring. So this is some examples of tech being used or not being used, okay? Right, okay, so other things. So again, uh, this is me and uh, some Ahis and Huawei stuff. So we actually brainstorm very often, right? What are the things that can be improved? Because again, nobody has done a COVID-19 or pandemic situation before. So we have all the SOP, right? Uh, we have even the SARS experience for some of us, but it doesn't solve all the problem because every day there are new changes, right? Uh, we form NCID due to SARS, right? But after that, uh, nobody has ever done this Fang Chang EU and right? CIF or CCF. In so many places today, we have Expo, we have Changi Exhibition Center, we have Tuas and many more coming out. Right, so how do you actually manage it centrally and uh, at distributed manner? So all these things we think of it uh, on a daily basis. I would say that every day you have new critical path that you need to solve, right? And on the this top part is the sanitizer mist donated by uh, the Marseille Foundation. Right, this is probably very similar to uh, what many people have uh, deployed, but we didn't get it right from the start because there's a lot of considerations to look at it whether. The, the, you need to pass through NEA, you need to pass through many other people, right? Because you need to put the sanitizer uh, uh, <clears throat> fumes inside. Okay, so this is another example, not just hardware, right? I've been seeing, seeing a lot of AI, robotics, and so on and so forth. But this is a case of a RPA, right? Very simple, a lot of people doing RPA today, right? But when we first started, people actually have to take all the patient data, do data entry into the telehealth system itself, yeah? Okay, so things like this, you can't really deploy from day one because there's a lot of unknowns still. Patient data are also confidential. So how do you ensure all these things are done properly, right? It's a step-by-step -step process. You need to try it. You need to improve it along the way, yeah? Sorry. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. When new critical paths appear at every moment, you really got to be innovative on the ground, think on the feet. So these things may look very simple to you, uh, but it's not that simple, right? We call it T-O-W, telehealth on wheels. So what is telehealth on wheels? Why is it invented or co-invented, right? The whole reason is that once, uh, before any patients go into any of the exhibition hall as an isolation ward, you can still put all the devices there, like what you have seen in the previous slide. But once people are there, Right, you can't really, you don't want to risk more people going inside, right? All the, all the uh, support people, you don't want to risk them going inside because there may be a slight chance of uh, infection. You also want to try to avoid it. So what to do? 
right? And you cannot call, carry so many different, as I say, right? They are not integrated, right? So no integrated devices, one device solves all problems. So no one is going to bring five devices in calls into the different wards. So we have uh, actually, uh, that was during circuit uh, breaker period and there was a long queue outside IKEA before it closed down, right? So IKEA was very famous. So during this time where we need this thing, IKEA was already closed. So we had to give a call to IKEA to open up, right? To get all this white color table, so we need to go to those shops to buy the wheels and mount them on it because the white tables, you know, IKEA is uh, self-assemble, right? So you have to self-assemble. You need to go and find wheels because they don't have enough wheels and then make them into a table that can move around, right? Then you mount all the different devices, the five devices you have seen onto this thing, right? So they can push it inside and you let the medical PPE people, the nurses and others in the isolation ward to bring it inside and to be able to move around. So this is, again, to you may not be the most high-tech thing, but it was so efficient that you can solve all the problems and all the needs uh, uh, of the CIF and the CCF across multiple locations because we assemble that in Expo and we ship them, not ship, we actually uh, ask the lorry to send them to TWAS as well, right? So again, this is part of technology, may not be the most high-tech thing, but it's useful to solve the problem, okay? So this is a quick summary of uh, what, we have done. Of course, there are many other stories to share along the way and there are new innovations along the way as well. And we are also looking at bringing robotics, AI, all this thing inside, right? But again, it has to be by a step-by-step -step manner, okay? So this is from a real life experience, real story, right? We always like to hear real stories. Okay, now, uh, like what Mike mentioned, most of the people uh, locally in Singapore should already know MCS, right? But just in case some people do not know, or people will have still the old experience of MCS, or there are some global uh, attendants here, right? So MCS, uh, to many of them is, to many of the people who knows it, right, is one of the largest uh, SI in Singapore, and many of the projects uh, done are with the government public sectors, right? But to some of you may not know that, sorry, MCS actually has regional presence as well in Greater China, Australia, right? Some of the ASEAN countries, uh, most of this may not be exactly all the customers in those respective countries, but we have delivery centers, we have innovation centers in some of these places. Yeah, And for people who thought that NCS is only in the public sector business, yes, they're still the largest, right? Defense and Homeland Security, Public Services, MOE and everyone else, right? There are commercial sectors, which again, I belong to the h &T, right? Healthcare and Transport. So these are the commercial sector. Although they are classified as commercial sector, uh, we are also serving the lights of MOH, Ministry of Health, the uh, IHEs, uh, the public hospitals, right, uh, the NHG, and so on and so forth. And same thing goes to the financial sector, who, who serve the private banks, as well as serving people like the MAS. Yeah. So this is actually the, the NCS model. And uh, you can look at the right-hand side. As I mentioned, it is not just about hardware, right? You have seen a lot of hardware just now, right, from stylus pen to iPad uh, to also robotics and so on and so forth. But NCS does the application services a lot as well, right? That, that includes things like RPA, right? And also any kind of software development. Most of the systems that uh, local Singaporeans are using, whether is it your healthcare financing, like the Medica Generations and the CHAS, right? And some of the operation management systems, these are all developed by NCS, okay? And of course, NCS need to grow, right? So we are not just looking at the traditional SI, large-scale, complex transformation program kind of businesses. We are also into the digital side of things where we call the next services, right? Whether it's a cloud, digital platform services, we are all into it, right? That's one of the reasons why I joined NCS after 15 years outside of Singapore, right? That's because uh, I bring in the digital experience where many of our new colleagues also bring in the digital experience into NCS. And that's where hopefully very soon, uh, people like yourself can see how NCS is transforming, yeah? So clients-wise, uh, I wouldn't go down into detail, right? So many of the local com companies, right, uh, public sectors, are all our customers, right? Uh, some notable one in healthcare, right? Uh, as I mentioned, MOH, uh, HSA, HPB, IHE, so on and so forth. And even people like the, the Buddha Relic Temple, uh, Foya Si, for those who are Buddhist and go to this temple in Chinatown, we also do projects for them, right? So these are something that not me, not many people knows about that. Okay. Now, of course, there's a Mandai. Mandai project is very interesting. It's an integrated resort, right, where you will have all the uh, different zoos and the river safaris into a future integrated resource. That's a big project that's ongoing. Yeah. 
Okay, from partnership perspective, uh, of course, we are NCS is a strong partner of Huawei, right? Uh, working in different front, uh, locally in Singapore as well as in China, right? And of course, uh, most of the like SAS, AWS, we are all partners with them. We have the different certification with them, Microsoft, Oracle, and so on and so forth, right? Hopefully, uh, out of this seminar, we will have more partners, yeah, being brought in as well. Okay. And the next slide about NCS contributing to community uh, during the COVID-19, right? So apart from what you see in the expo, which is the left-hand side, we also donated our thermal scanners to the different, uh, whether it's community hospitals or some of the senior activity centers, right? So that's some of the CSR that we've done, right? We also refurbished laptops to enable students with uh, home-based learning, right? For those uh, needy students. So these are the CSR that NCS has done to uh, help the public in terms of the COVID-19 uh, uh, situation, okay? So very quickly, uh, I think everyone has introduced their solutions. I also want to just spend some minutes to uh, introduce NCS solutions uh, relevant to combat or fight the COVID-19 situation, okay? Jim, can you, one... quickly, uh, can you quickly uh, summarize because we are running out yeah. of time? Thanks. Sure, sure, yeah. Okay, so just last three slides, I think. Okay, what, so the first one is the temperature self-check. I think uh, many people have presented something similar just now, right? Again, uh, as you can see from the reference site, we have deployed this in Tan Tok Seng Hospital, SMRT, NTUC downtown, upper front, right? So these are not expensive uh, thermal self-check kiosks that NCS can actually provide to you if you need it, okay? The next one is, of course, a thermal scanner. So again, this is not something new. Right, and then uh, the thermal camera that can do crowd control that was also e deployed and reported in the Channel 8 news in Singapore. So this include the, all the things that the other presenter has mentioned, AI, facial recognitions, so and so forth, yeah. And on the uh, top right-hand side, the disinfection chamber, same thing, right? This is something that you have seen Tamase has deployed in the expo. We have also uh, worked with partners to bring them into Singapore, okay. Okay, the second last slide, right? So there are also some solutions that we are deploying today with some of the public sector, right? You have Trace Together for contract tracing, but ours is a telco-based uh, approach, right? Where you can have some advantages of that. For those interested, we can discuss about the pros and cons, right? As compared to a GPS-based, payment-based versus a telco database. Yep. And also we are working with some of the agencies on the pandemic predictions based on the heat map, right? Okay, let me just move on quickly the last slide. There's another thing that we are also ongoing working with uh, some of the research institution, right? That is a robot health manager, right? So you can see that many people have different silos uh, solutions just now, right? So all the silos, silo solutions, if you can work uh, hand in hand together and have a dashboard view, that's good. But if you don't have that, that's something that we are developing again for some of the agencies right, that uh, if you're interested uh, in your company, we can also discuss further, right? This includes things like the uh, gesture and sound detection, right? Because you will have wheezing sound due to the lungs uh, part of things for COVID-19. Then you can track where the robot is moving around with the heat map. And then you have the vital signs monitoring that we already shown and deployed in the CCF itself, right? So these are the different solutions that we can offer. I didn't go down to details. Uh, it's not a solution selling uh, session. But if you're interested, right, you can always contact me and I'll direct you to the right salesperson to have a further discussion with you. Yep. Okay, that ends my presentation. Over to you. Jim. Yeah, thank you very much. Fascinating. Your, your presentation is really fascinating. Bringing real life into uh, technology, right? Um, and I think you show very clearly that while we want to digitally transform our processes, the need for brick and mortar, like logistic support, you know, is still important, right? You can order food online, but if there's no one to store the food, eat the food, deliver it to you, there's still no point, right? Yeah, that's right. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, your example of the IKEA uh, assembly <laughs> challenge was, I think, quite uh, indicative of this problem that we always have, even though we may go online as much as we can. Okay, Jim, thank you very much. Uh, we actually have run beyond our time. So, so appreciate your, your very uh, innovative uh, solution that you presented. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right. We have.